Good day, I'm Carrie Ann Smith and this is your GIS News for Friday, August 22. The IMF staff mission to Jamaica has confirmed that the country passed the fifth quarterly test under the extended fund facility. The team has been in the island since August 13 and presented their findings at a press briefing Friday morning. Andrea Chisholm has the story. The program is on track. Overall, policy implementation under the program remains strong. All quantitative performance targets, indicative targets and structural benchmarks for NJUNE were met. That was the head of the IMF mission to Jamaica, Yankee Smartin, confirming Jamaica's positive performance for the April to June quarter. That information will be passed on to the IMF's executive board, which will assess the findings in September, and if accepted, Jamaica will get about 71 million US dollars more under the program. With the fifth review completed, Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips says the government will place more emphasis on strengthening growth, increasing investor confidence, and creating jobs. The government of Jamaica is committed to continuing the extensive program of reforms, of tax and public sector financial management, of the public sector modernization, of labor market reforms, all of which are important elements of the program going forward. The head of the IMF mission to Jamaica also indicated that the government was on track to achieve a primary surplus target of 7.5% of the country's gross domestic product. For GIS News, I'm Andrea Chisholm. The Minister of Health is advising persons against travelling to the Ebola-affected areas of Liberia, Nigeria, Guinea and Sierra Leone in West Africa for entertainment and other similar purposes. Minister of Health Dr. Fenton Ferguson points out that travel to these areas puts these individuals, their families and other Jamaicans at risk of contracting the deadly virus, which has a death rate of up to 90%. On Friday, August 8, the World Health Organization declared Ebola a public health emergency of international concern. The virus is transmitted through direct contact with blood, other bodily fluids or secretions, and symptoms include sudden onset of fever, intense weakness, muscle pain, headache, and a sore throat. This may be followed by vomiting, diarrhea, rash, impaired kidney and liver function, and in some cases, both internal and external bleeding. Any individual who believes he or she has been exposed to the virus should seek immediate medical treatment and reduce contact with other persons as much as possible. The Minister of Education says everything is in place to ensure a smooth start to the new school year, which begins on Monday, September 1. Speaking at a JIS think tank on Wednesday, Chief Education Officer Dr. Grace McLean said every action was being taken to ensure that all primary and secondary schools were adequately prepared. I'm pleased to say that all high schools accounts are now uh, funded with the tuition and maintenance grants. Primary schools are funded with their first term grants as well. Dr. McLean is also reminding school administrators that students should not be disbarred from attending classes because of non-payment of auxiliary fees. She says the internal tuition grants and auxiliary fee structures for the 2014-2015 academic year should also remain the same as last year. No changes should be made uh, within our schools unless uh, approval has been given for specific reasons. Meanwhile, the Education Ministry has sent out a cease and desist call for those schools that are withholding students' CSEC and CAPE results due to financial delays. The Ministry is also insisting that administrators stop charging exorbitant costs for a number of back-to-school services. At such a sensitive and difficult period, we are asking you not to withhold student CSEC and CAPE results or even registration packages uh, that we are being told that schools are charging significant amount. Some schools are even withholding the book lists and asking parents to pay before they can get necessary documents to prepare their children for the new school year. We have seen the trend, it is worrying, and we are asking our school administrators to desist from doing um, this, but we are also asking our parents to be responsible and to fulfill their obligation. And finally, 1,000 families registered on the Program of Advancement through Health and Education Path are to participate in a Welfare to Work program over the next two years. Labor and Social Security Minister Derek Kelly says the program will be implemented on a phased basis and it should cost approximately $600 million. He made the announcement while addressing representatives from the Organization of American States, OAS, and CARICOM. As a government, we want to see past beneficiaries ultimately position themselves to participate effectively in the labor market and contribute to the national growth agenda. 
the OAS CARICOM team is conducting a three-day study tour of PAP. Their intention is to help implement similar social protection programs in their home countries of Antigua, the Bahamas, Barbados, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Dominica. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Carrie Ann Smith. Thanks for watching.